Samantha from Jessie Mouse Tutorials here and welcome back to another Inspired by That Photo video. So today you're going to mix up some custom colours. So the first colour that I've got here is 20 parts translucent to 1 part black and then I also added a fair amount of uh, blue liquid clay to tint it. Now you can use alcohol ink instead of liquid clay if you don't have liquid clay, uh, but I like the liquid clay more because it softens up the clay. Uh, it doesn't have as much of a color shift once you've baked it, and the colored Kato liquid clays are translucent. If you don't have the Kato ones, uh, don't use it because you want it to be translucent. So that's going to be our base color. We're not going to use that right this second. Then I have another colour over here, here we go, and this is translucent and I mixed a fair amount of the blue liquid clay and also a little bit of the green Kato liquid clay. Again, you can use alcohol inks if you want, the goal is to try to keep this as translucent as possible and that's what I was trying to go for here. So then I'm just going to cut it into sections. Just roughly all the same size and go up on a piece of paper so that it doesn't stick to the tire. Okay, then I'm going to grab one, put that to the side because we can use that in a bit. I'm going to grab this one and you want this clay to be rolled out as thin as you possibly can on your pasta machine so the thinnest setting is best. And I'm actually going to pop this onto the tile. Let me bring you a little forward. There we go. And you should have seen the photo that we are trying to imitate today. Now I might not get the exact same colour, but we are mostly going for the pattern. So I'm going to be using uh, some silk screens. Here's one and here's another one. And these are both ones that I sell on my Etsy store. You can use any silk screens that kind of have a cracked, stripy pattern. So we'll use this one first. Also, if this one looks a little bit uh, damaged, I actually left it on the side to dry and my cat ended up getting a hold of it and playing with it and so that's why it looks a bit scruffy. Managed to salvage it, but yeah, don't leave your silk screens where your cats can get a hold of them because they'll play with them and end up ruining them. Yeah, so there anyway, I'll attach it to the clay. And then I've got a mix of silver and pearl white metallic paints. Give those a good shake. And I'll be using pearl white first. Okay, okay. and I'm actually going to be using this silver paint because I realised uh, after trying to use the other one that it's actually old. This one's also getting a little old, but it will do. There we go. Then grab a swipe. And then we're going to swipe across the clay. Like so. Okay. And I'm just going to clean that up. There we go. There we go, clean your silt screen. Okay, and while that is drying, I'm going to bring over some plain white this time. And just give me, give it a sec, there we go. Just going to bring some plain white and I'm going to just spread that out. Like so. Just clean that off. And then I'm going to use a card and a knife to do this next part. The reason I'm going to be using a card and a knife is because they'll both have different thicknesses in terms of uh, lines. There we go. And I mean, if you don't have the salt screens, you can do just this at home. You don't have to have the salt screens. I just like the variety. But yeah. There you can see the 
it's a little more um, sorry for the noise I can't um, avoid that but you can see how it's got two very different thicknesses And don't be afraid to kind of have blotchy lines, you don't have to have them all be completely solid. There we go. Then clean that up. Okay, and the last one that we're going to do, I'm just going to be using this kind of shattered glass effect, and this is going to be our top layer. And this one I'm going to have a mix of pearl white and white. So I'm just going to spread the white across, bring over the pearl white and do much the same thing. There we go, so we've got a good mix. Bring over the card. making sure to get a decent layer of paint across there so there needs to be a little bit of mixing involved so that's what I'm doing here there we go and you'll still end up with a little bit of an uneven finish but that's what we want there we go clean off your salt screen okay and so then once they are dried I'm going to take this one, which is our smallest one, and this is going to dictate the size of our piece. So I'll just trim off this excess, like so. Then okay. I'm going to bring the next one over, which is this one. And I'm just going to pop that over the top like so burnish it into place so that it's stuck on well and don't worry we'll be able to see this in a bit we just need to layer them and then we are going to run it through the pasta machine as well just to thin it out a little bit pop that one down again burnish it so that it is stuck on well Trim away your excess and these leftovers you can use these don't throw them away or anything like that you can always use these pieces and I have a lot of leftover video tutorials there will be more coming up probably using the leftovers shown uh, used in this video so be sure to keep them but there we go and I've got a little extra there Okay, then I'm going to run that through on my middle setting, making this roughly 2mm thick, like so. And there we go. I'm not sure whether you can see it or not, but you can definitely see through the layers there. Okay. And the last thing to do before we can pop this on the backing is to take our clay. And I'm just going to run this out as thin as I possibly can and just put a layer over the top here to protect the paint. Okay, I've got this very thin piece here. And you can make it even thinner by very gently stretching those sides. Then I'm going to lay that over the surface very carefully. And then I'm going to work over that surface to smooth out those air bubbles because I don't want to trap any. Okay. There we go. And that will protect it and that way we can sand it if we want to. 
and also the white on its own is a little bit uh, stock and I wanted to cover it with a little bit more blue. Okay, there we go. Then I've got my black clay over here. So flip that upside down. Bring your black clay over. And we're going to pop that down onto the surface and again smooth that out. And lift up. Okay. Then we're going to burnish that so that it's all nice and smooth. Like so. And this will get rid of fingerprints, it will just bond all the layers together and in general finish it up. There we go. Okay, now I do have this on a piece of paper so I'm not sure if the clay is going to stick in the cutter or not. If it does, I might have to bring over something, but let's see if we can cut it without sticking. What I'll do is I'll cut the cutter halfway through, unstick it and then cut it the whole way through and that just makes it less likely to stick it doesn't guarantee it won't though so. there we go. it will make it easier to get out of the cutter though there we go and that's our one earring I'm gonna cut out the next one now okay and then I'll just cut out my circle from over here and again just kind of blow it out okay and there we go I also cut out some little sea glass earrings as well because I like the pebble shape uh, and I think it would match so anyway I'm going to pop those into the oven for a full hour at Primrose recommended temperature and we'll see how they look when they're done okay and here they are out of the oven I've given them a quick sand to smooth them off and so now the next step is going to be to varnish them. You don't have to because everything's covered by uh, the translucent clay so you don't have to seal it but I did want to give it a shiny finish. So I've just got some Varathane gloss varnish over here. And just brush that over the surface in a relatively thin layer. And once the front has dried, I will also glaze the back. There we go. And just repeat with all of the others. Okay, and then once they finish drying, they should have a nice shiny sheen to them. And that will have also cleared up the translucent bit. So the next step is just going to be to drill them however you want to uh, assemble them. So I've already done the others and we, I'll show those in a second. But basically you'll just drill through like that. Very easy. Bring over a jump ring. Pop that through. Grab a ear wire. Oops. There we go. And close it up. Super easy. So that's that one. And here's the matching one. And then for the other two, I actually assembled them like this. And you can, of course, assemble them however you want. This is just the way that I chose to assemble them. There we go. But yeah, 
that's basically it. Obviously they're not going to look exactly like the photo. The photo is a way to get your creative juices flowing. And I'm quite happy with how these turned out. The translucent effect is quite cool. And if you wanted to, you could play with the technique a lot more and actually get a more realistic effect. For this one, I was just going with the um, style and colours that the photo had. So anyway, if you enjoyed the tutorial, please do let me know in the comments below. Please remember to like and subscribe if you haven't. It greatly helps the channel out and is completely free. And if you'd like to support the channel further, there is a join button below the video um, and be to become a member of the channel. I have exclusive videos every month. Uh, you can also join on Patreon. Same videos there as the YouTube membership. Uh, or you can buy the tools that I used in today's video. Those also really help uh, support the channel going forward but yeah I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one bye for now